This analysis is actually a secondary analysis of the Astral One study. So the Astral uh, One study basically was the largest uh, randomized study conducted in older unfit patients uh, with AML. And this study specifically looked at the, uh, basically compared uh, a second generation hypomethylating agent called goadecitabine uh, to uh, decitabine, azacitidine, all of those RSC. All of those are the three standard options basically for older unfit patients with AML. And the study was presented in uh, uh, already. However, uh, the main presentation was focusing on the, com on the comparison of those three standard therapy arms of azacitidine, decitabine, and low dose RSC, and there was no difference compared to goadecitabine, which was, you know, uh, unfortunate. It, it wasn't, uh, uh, there wasn't like a clear signal for, uh, for goadecitabine uh, in terms of efficacy. However, I, uh, what we took advantage in uh, from this study uh, is uh, a comparison between azacitidine and decitabine. So both azacitidine and decitabine are approved for uh, management of uh, high-risk MDS, but they are also the de facto standard of care in the U.S. for older unfit patients with AML. They are, I think, also are approved in, in Europe, um, but low-dose RSC is also often used in, in Europe. However, there has been no comparison in large, big studies, basically uh, randomized studies between azacitidine and decitabine. So we took advantage of the Astral 1 study that in, uh, in enrolled a large number of, of patients. So the total Astral 1 enrollment was 815 patients. And of those, basically, the investigator could pre-select before the randomization whether they want the patient to receive azacitidine, decitabine, or low-dose RSC uh, versus uh, one of those three agents. And then the patient gets randomized. And if the patient is randomized to the intervention arm, they will get good decitabine. If they are randomized to the standard, um, of care arm, they would get whatever the investigator pre-selected, whether it's azacitidine, decitabine, or low-dose RSC. And what we did in the study is that we compared the outcomes of patients who received azacitidine or decitabine. So 171 patients received azacitidine, 167 patients received decitabine. And as I mentioned, they were all treated within the same prospective trial, within the same setting. And I think what we found was basically uh, no difference between patients who have received azacitidine or uh, decitabine in terms of their uh, complete remission rate, which was for azacitidine 17.5% versus 19.2% for decitabine, or the composite complete remission, which was 22.2% versus 25.1% for azacitidine and decitabine retrospect, uh, respectively. Sorry. And when we look at the median overall survival, with azacitidine, it was 8.7 months, and decitabine was 8.2 months. Uh, with no, of course, uh, you don't need statistics to kind of um, know that this is not significant. There was a significant overlap in the Kaplan-Meier uh, curves with an, over, uh, with an hazard ratio for overall survival of 0.97 and the low rank test of 0.81. So I think this somewhat confirms what many of us have suspected already is that there is a no significant difference between azacitidine and decitabine. However, this remained an important question. One of the most common questions I get in my clinic when people want to uh, treat patients with AML, should I give them azacitidine or decitabine? Should I give them five days or 10 days of decitabine or different schedules of azacitidine? And I think this, uh, uh, this analysis in addition to a previous retrospective analysis that we published um, using SEER Medicare, both of them, I think, have now conclusive answers that uh, uh, using the standard schedule of decitabine five days or the seven days of azacitidine, there does not seem any significant response uh, difference or difference in the overall survival. This overall survival estimate that I think you can best, uh, present to our patients is somewhere in the range of uh, seven and a half to nine months. This is what we are seeing with both of those agents as monotherapy for a median overall survival, and the CR rate in the range of uh, 20%. So clearly, a lot of improvement is needed. And I think in my mind, this is an important analysis because I think it uh, probably uh, allows uh, most uh, studies to use either one of those drugs as a uh, combination uh, platform because many of the studies were using azacitidine uh, because it's an approved agent uh, 
I think, for a longer time in, in Europe and based on other uh, analysis. However, many investigators prefer to use beside to be in for, because it's short there, it's five days, you can give it, so it's easier for some patients who cannot come for seven days. So I think those studies, uh, in my view, uh, mean that whatever combination we get with, it, for example, is a cytidine venetoclass or glass to give or any of those combination, IDH inhibitors, you probably can substitute as a cytidine with the cytidine uh, with a five-day schedule without uh, losing any, um, uh, anything in terms of the efficacy that you'd expect to your patients.